Hi everyone, my name is Paul and I'm from Skysiv Online Engineering Software. Today I'm just going to go through a quick tutorial on how we can analyze a multi-frame structure. So as you can see on the screen, this is the structure we're going to be aiming to analyze. So what I'll do is I'll start up a new project by clicking File, New. And yes, we want to start a new project. Now to speed this process up a little bit, I have all my nodes and members on an Excel spreadsheet. So what I'll do is copy my nodes from Excel, copy, go back to SkySiv, click nodes, open up the data sheet, and control V to paste. So as you can see the table populated and that's all my nodes. So if I click apply, all the nodes show up on the screen. Now let's go back to Excel. So I'll, I'll copy my members. Same process. Go back to SkySiv. Open up members, open up the data sheet, paste. That's all my members. If I hit apply, they should all appear. And there we go. That's our structure. Now, the, as you can see, there's two different types of members there. There's black members, which represent section ID 0, and there's green members, which represent section ID 1. So I've set it up this way because I want those members to have different sections. So the section ID 0, which are the black members, I'll make as I-beams. So I'll do a top width of 120 millimeters, top thickness of 8, bottom width 120, bottom thickness 8, web height 100, and web thickness 10. And as you can see, it's drawn up the I-beam. Now for the material, I'll select structural steel, submit. So this flicked over to section ID 1, so it got added. So that was the black members. Now for the green members, which is section ID 1. I'll create a hollow rectangular, so we'll do a width of 100, height of 40, inner width of 90, and an inner height of 30, so that gives us a wall thickness of 10. And the same material, structural steel. Submit, and there you can see we have our two sections added. Now we'll add some supports. So I want supports at the ground of the structure. So that would be where all the columns meet the ground. So that's nodes 0, 1, 4, 3, 2, 5, 8, 7, 6, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So let's do this through the data sheet. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11 and 12. And the restraint code FFFFFF means that it's fully fixed. So this would simulate a column uh, which is fully fixed. So that's like if it's welded to the foundations or it's embedded in concrete for instance. And when I click the ply you can see the base uh, has uh, the base of all the columns are fully supported and that's what the, the green dots represent. Okay, now it's time to add some loads. So the first thing I want to do is switch self-weight on. So I go to the left menu and click self-weight, switch it to on, and click apply. Also what I'll do is I'll, I'll make sure that self-weight has a load factor of 1. Okay, now let's add some other loads. So what I'll do is I'll set up a distributed load on that first level of the structure. So on these four members. And as you can see this tag here represents the member ID. So let's add some distributed loads. So that's member 30, 47, 28 and 49. So 30, 47, 28 and 49. So I'm going to do a negative 5 in the Y, kilonewton meter distributed load. 
Now, as you can see, it got added. Similarly, I'll add another distributed load on this side of the structure. So it's, that's members 44, 53, 45, and 52. And this time I'll do a negative 8 kilonewton per meter distributed load. And there you go, it's been added. I'll also add some distributed loads to the top of the structure. So along 56, 57, 58, and 59. So 56, 57, I'll do negative 15 kilonewtons per meter. So that's that big load there. And then 58, 59, I'll do negative 10. And there we go. Now let's add some point loads. So I want to do a point load in the x-axis at node 35, so 35. We'll go with 20 kilonewton meters. As you can see, it got added. And we'll do one more at node 27 in the y direction. We'll do negative 30 kilonewtons. Okay. So we've set up everything and we should be ready to solve now. Now just a quick note, if you want to make our structure look a little bit cleaner, we can hit settings and turn off those member labels. And it just makes things a little bit easier to read sometimes. So now that I'm ready to solve, I'll click solve. And just wait for it to solve. And there you go, solve successfully. So now we're ready to analyze <clears throat> the results provided by the software. So first thing anyone's usually interested in are the reactions at the supports. So if I turn on reactions, you can see it's quite messy, but this is because there's many, many supports. So if I really wanted to get those values, I would probably just open up the report. So I'd go output and detailed analysis report and scroll down to these node reactions. So we have reactions in the XYZ force and XYZ moment. And I could I could do this for any result if I wanted specific results, but it's sometimes better to look at the drawings. So all these red buttons on the left are the results that we can get. So displacement for instance. This is the curve of how the structure will be displaced. And we also have a scale that we can play with if we want to see, you know, if we want to see how extravagant things can get, I suppose. Yeah, and we also have axial, axial force results. And you can see that's starting to get a little bit cluttered because there are a lot of members, but um, there's also shear force diagram, moment diagrams. And again, that's it's quite detailed um, and cluttered. So the, the best way to see these results sometimes is to use the 3D renderer, which you can easily get into by clicking this cube on the right of screen. And there we can see our structure as if it was in real life, a, re a real world perspective of our structure. If I wanted to distinguish my sections, I could click color sections. And yeah. Now if I want to choose a result, I can just select from the drop-down menu. For instance, I want deflection total, show result. And yeah, we have a nice representation of the results this way without any clutter. Um, yeah, And the scale is on the bottom right of screen, so we see a maximum deflection there of 15 millimeters where it's red. And we have other results like your bending force, shear force, axial force and all your stresses as well so you can check whether your material can can handle those loads yeah and the last thing we can do is we can actually check the shape of the deflection this way as well so if I increase my deflection scale you should be able to see the structure moving although it might be difficult to see in the video so if we go top view we can see it curving out where that horizontal load was placed 
And yeah, that's just a quick tutorial on the capabilities of SkySiv Structural 3D's uh, structural analysis software. Um, if you'd like to know more, please visit skysiv.com. And um, yeah, so you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Hope to see you on board.